Hey guys, how's it going? So I've got some beautiful stuff to plant today. Three different types of plants, one of which I have talked about before, the Brandywine Viburnum. I planted one about this time last year and it did so well that I bought two more. I also have a uh, little Henry Itea, which is gonna be a little bit of an experiment. I'm hoping it's supposed to be a variety that's adaptable to higher pH. Um, and then I've got a gorgeous ornamental grass called Blonde Ambition. Look at the seed heads on this. Oh, now we can't really see what the uh, leaf color looks like as well as we would have been able to earlier on. You can kind of see it. It's like a blue green color, uh, but it is starting to turn more wheat colored for fall, but wonderful interest all throughout most of the year. Oh, I just love it. I've got three of those. Here's the little Henry Itea. You can see it is um, already coloring up for fall a little bit. You can see the little, um, I don't know if you call these pods, but these are where the blooms were. So they bloom uh, midsummer, mid, I think, early to midsummer, white blooms that apparently look like fireworks. I'm excited about that. To give those a try, I've got three of those. And then we've got two of the Brandywine Viburnum, which they are showing, well, right here. Oh, well, <laughs> they're gonna start losing their leaves here soon, right? Um, so beautiful fall color here. The clusters of berries which this one can tend to have blue and pink berries at the same time like in the same cluster i'm not really seeing that here but you can see potential right there they always act differently once they're planted as opposed to being in a container but anyway and these bloom in the spring clusters of white blooms and that's what comes before these berries so i'm standing over here on the west side because that's where we planted the brandywine viburnum i actually planted three shrubs kind of by the urns and really haven't planted anything else because i'm kind of I don't know, I, I'm a little torn about this area, planting it up because I love the simplicity of it, the structure of it, and the breathing space that this area allows. Right now, we're kind of early-ish in the morning. That's why I'm in a winter coat because it is kind of chilly out here. But I just love, love the boxwood hedging, which is starting to look more like a hedge I love it. We recently planted the bump outs here, and then we've got the urns. I've got a Glow Girl Spirea here, and then this is the Brandywine Viburnum right here. So this spot actually is very, very sunny. I mean, just in just a minute here, it's gonna be sun and sun all day until the very end. Um, and that's what impressed me about this plant. I always thought of viburnums as being a plant that you need to provide afternoon protection for, and maybe you do in really high, um, like wind areas, uh, maybe high traffic areas that get a lot of sun, a lot of wind, uh, which is kind of where I'm gonna be planting the other brandy wines. Given the fact that this one handled the full sun this year with no burning makes me kind of feel more confident. Now this one is protected by the Arborvita hedge. It's not getting the wind. So I wanna be a little bit strategic about where I put this, these two out on the new property. Uh, maybe planting them where I think a shade of a tree will be in the afternoon. I'm kind of going that route so that just in case they do need more protection in big open areas like that they might be okay uh, but I want to put the little Henry's out there and the grasses out there as well so I wanted to start here though so I could show you how good that brandy wine did I also just got the brand new uh, power planter nine inch auger that has the heavy-duty tip so we get to try that out for the first time today we recently did an auger video we will link it down below and I was talking about how like the seven inch has the heavy-duty tip and it makes it so much easier to dig than the nine inch and power planter actually Actually has one they're not available for sale yet but they will be so they sent us out one to give so we can give it a try so anyway I'm excited to try that today because I think that's gonna make our job easier so this is the heavy-duty tip right here it makes digging so much easier because it kind of creates a pilot hole before your larger diameter tries to dig Ooh, super exciting it's super clean this is the only time this tool will look like this all right so I'm just going to start driving out to the new property, the South Garden, and we're gonna find some locations, get them planted, and then we can go over some more of the details about these plants.
them all in the ground. They all ended up kind of in the same location. There's so much space over here that it's kind of like just find an empty one and you're good. So in this area here, this is the entrance of our property and the east southeast corner around where the grass loop walkway is. So starting with the Brandywine Viburnums, I did put them both kind of close together, which at first I thought, oh boy, maybe I should move one because I don't want it to look like it's a grouping, but there's a lot of space between them uh, to put a lot of other things. So I think they'll be broken up enough uh, once I get some things in here, uh, but they do grow, I think I mentioned five to six feet wide. So pretty good sized shrubs. So I left enough room in the front to plant other things so that it's not like a, it's a back layer, I guess you could call it. And I also planted this this uh, first one right beneath a forest pansy red bud, hoping that that will provide a little bit of dappled shade, a little bit of afternoon sun, but it's gonna be an experiment because this one over here, until I get something taller planted, will be getting more sun. Uh, this one is really pretty actually in this grouping. There are three totem pole grasses there and then the viburnum to fill in that space right here and then a drift of senorita roses. I think that is going to be so pretty. So a few extra details on these. They are a zone five through nine, if I didn't mention that already. Uh, the blooms that are white in clusters like this are fragrant in the spring and they do bloom on old wood. Um, so best to put this somewhere where you can just let it grow to its full size. If you do need to prune it, it is best to do it just right after they're done blooming. That way you will forfeit possible fruit that fall and winter, but you will get springs the next year. Um, so just keep that in mind. They are self-pollinating, so you don't need to have more than one in order to get fruit. However, I did read that if you have multiples, they will fruit better, and that's kind of typical of most things. And apparently they are adaptable to soil pH because we typically do fairly well with uh, viburnums in our area where we're very high pH. Uh, they do like to be in a spot that's well draining. Like most everything else, except for the sweet spires, the ITS we just planted, those can handle a wet situation. So let's go take a look at those. So these ended up close to the area where Jenny and I just planted some sedum and sesky gold dwarf birch. So this is Jenny's corner. Here are the little Henry ITS. Now I positioned them over here on purpose because you can see in the winter time, right now we're in October, and this area here is full sun in the summertime. But as the sun shifts in the sky for fall and winter, it kind of, um, goes this way a little bit more and creates shade here, which makes this area retain a lot more water. Um, so sedums, we'll see how they do, but the ITAs should be fairly happy. Um, these little Henrys grow two to three feet tall and wide, so I thought they'd be really good, kind of close together, left enough space to plant something else in front of them. Um, but they bloom, like I said, the white firework looking blooms um, in the summertime and then uh, they do bloom on old wood just like the viburnum so if you do have to prune do it immediately after a bloom the blooms do attract bees and butterflies though which is really exciting and these are deer resistant and oh the fall color i just am loving seeing these pops of orange and red i imagine here in just even a week with our cooler nights these are going to be really gorgeous a couple of really great things about this one is that um, they can handle full shade full sun to full shade not a lot of things can do that now the production of flowers and uh, fall color may not be quite as good in a full shade location which is typical but to have something that can handle it is awesome because sometimes you have those weird areas where you want like a hedge of something or a drift but you've got a tree um, providing shade on half of it. I have one of those on the west side of our house where our juniper uh, shades a good portion of it, but then I've got like this huge full sun section on one end. So it's kind of one of those things that you can put like boxwoods. You can put these ideas in there. Now it's going to be an experiment for me here because I have planted the vanilla spice summer sweet twice and they've died both times. And I don't know if it was a water issue, a pH issue. This one's supposed to be more adaptable to different pH. Um, but I just, I kind of want to keep trying. And I thought, you know, out here, maybe they will handle it differently. It's amazing how just even moving um, location not even that far can change uh, your outcome. So anyway, I'm gonna try it again. Hopefully I have a really good report for you in the end. Um, and then the grasses ended up right behind me. I think they're really pretty right here. So they do grow three feet tall, uh, three by three, put them in a little grouping here, uh, left enough space, one, to, we're gonna put a hose link here and we need to be able to pull it. And then I'll uh, do a shorter layer right here. Now we do have a big pile of uh, wood chips. We're gonna be finishing up our mulching, which will make this look a lot better. The tiger eye sumacs here are just amazing. They're just starting to color. So they kind of turn yellow and then, well, they're already light color anyway, and then they 
start brightening up and then we'll start to see this here very soon. Okay, back to these grasses. So they are a zone four through nine and they're actually native to 26 states. So they should do pretty good. Or I'm expecting them to anyway. Their seed heads kind of look like praying mantis to me. Don't they have that vibe? I think they're just so cool looking. So these bloom stalks start appearing about midsummer, uh, and they're really stiff and they um, tend to hold up in winters really well. So they actually provide a huge amount of interest from early spring all the way to really <laughs> early spring until you cut them back, which you go in and cut them back to about two to three inches above the ground level in uh, mid spring. And then you probably wanna think about dividing these every, uh, probably every three-ish years. And so we can continue on and like create a big, beautiful drift. Wouldn't it be pretty just to kind of have this grass go all underneath these sumacs? I think that'd be beautiful. So that's it for the plants. But when I was out here, I saw a little spot that I thought the statue that Aaron got for me for my, I think it was our first Christmas. I had it by our blue spruce that fell down. It's still just kind of sitting up there, but I think I found a spot to tuck it in. Let's go get it. See, she's just been hanging out right here. I might need Aaron to help me lift her though. Doesn't she look perfect right there? Just tucked in by the, that's a Deruder's Serbian spruce, a drift of orange smoothie daylilies, and then the purple blooming hyssop. So especially once these things are big and you know filled in, oh, I, I think she's perfect right there and I don't have any pieces like her out here yet. I actually stained her a few years back with um, just some wood stain and it's held up really well. She was looking real rough. Um, there for a, a little bit and she originally was like a kind of a pink stain which I don't care for like hugely so I kind of took her a little bit more of a, a brown color brown gray and I think she's really pretty so that's it for today's video I hope you guys enjoyed just seeing a few more plants going in out here I love to plant things this time of year when you can see what the fall color looks like and you know like with the grasses knowing that that's going to be a little spot of winter interest out here just every little thing just adds a little bit more to this space and it's just so exciting so anyway thank you guys so much for watching I hope you're having a really great day and we will see you in the next one bye